Hi, I'm Sebastian Copeland, and I would like to take you on a journey. Right this moment, Audi is navigating through the greatest transformation in automotive history, the shift from combustion engines to electric drivetrains. What are the implications of that change? And what does electrification mean to infrastructure, sustainability, and comfort? So let's go explore. Evald, we're here at a charging hub. Can you tell me a little bit about this? Yes, happy welcome. This is the first Audi charging hub we ever introduced to the public here in Nuremberg. It's our interpretation of a premium charging experience in the urban area, and we established our own ecosystem. So next to the reservation function, we do have micromobility here. You have a delivery service. All right, it's amazing. Springs. And what kind of technology goes into a unit like this for charging? Can you tell me what is uh, the brain of this uh, this building here? Yeah, the unique feature really is our second life battery storage. It's the heart of, of the concept. So we are utilizing used car batteries from our pre-development fleet. We do have the batteries out of around 27 e-tron cars, and then we are reassembling them here into one big battery storage system, placing the battery between the charger of the car and the local grid connection. And then we're just utilizing whatever grid connection we get from the local uh, energy supplier and uh, in between, the battery takes care of the rest. And how many charging hubs are there within mm -hmm. one station? For example, in Berlin, we do have four chargers at the location. Okay. Here, we do have six chargers. And, and the uniqueness really comes from the battery because here we do have a grid connection from 150 kilowatts and offering up to 960 kilowatts of charging power to the customers. So the battery works like a rain barrel. yeah. So it's slowly but steadily draining in energy from the local grid, also from the solar panels on the roof. And whenever the customers come, you crank up the hose and you release maximum power for the customers, but you're never stressing the local power grid. And what has happened in the last two years when it comes to charging? Speaking from an uh, Audi perspective, we, um, as part of the joint venture Ionity, are making sure that our customers have the possibility to charge at all major traffic roads in Europe at HPC charging stations. And in addition to that, we are offering the Audi charging, which is giving access to, um, I think it's more than 500,000 chargers in Europe all across different uh, charge point operators. Charging in the uh, electrification transformation is obviously a little bit of the bottleneck. Um, and so can you tell me what can we look forward? Yeah, I mean here with the Audi charging hub we have been focusing on making charging a premium experience. So basically really taking care of the customer. And what we did being a public charging um, network is to introduce a reservation function for Audi customers. Okay. So what you can do basically is if you know when you want to charge, you just uh, reserve a slot and you have the certainty that uh, the pillar is waiting for you when you get there. And what would you call is the, uh, the main headwinds in terms of speeding up this rollout process? Okay, so really the challenges are getting the right locations. We have a unique proposition for the landlords because we came up with a technical solution, which is a modular building kit that allows us to launch charging sites up from two chargers up to 16 charging pillars and all of it as a flying construction. So there's no groundwork. All we need is a sealed floor. So we can basically just rent a space, establish a charging hub. If demand grows, the batteries allow us to flexibly increase charging poles without adjusting the grid connection. And uh, if the demand decreases at any time, we can just basically pack our things and we can uh, move on. So this uh, building right here was established within four weeks from scratch to the wow. first customer charging. Okay. So that's what you meant with the premium experience you were talking about. This yeah. looks great. I love <laughs> Thanks. it. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. So the aim was really to establish something like a third place and uh, transforming waiting time into quality time. If you close your eyes, you imagine the future five, ten years from now. What does that look like? A lot of silence. Um, I imagine e-mobility being something that nobody is questioning anymore in, in society. And I believe that uh, charging, it's a non-event because we will make it a seamless experience. And this is why what we are also trying to accomplish here. 